The movie opens in Vietnam 1991. A cloaked figure makes his way through the pouring rain towards a building. The figure is international assassin Moody Dutton, and he arrives at a building. He enters a room and sees a body on the floor and pulls his gun. Inside, the room is filled with dead men, the aftermath of a gang massacre. Moody goes to grab the cash, but then hears a sound coming from the closet behind him. He goes checking with his gun ready, only to see a scared small girl holding a gun at him. Her gun misfires, and Moody kindly takes the gun, clears the chamber and hands it back to her. He manages to coax her out of the closet and leave with her, naming her Anna. Thirty years later, a gangster rushes over to a hotel where his boss's son Anton is supposed to be staying. He has not answered his phone for hours, and the man is pissed as his father is looking for him. He barges into Anton's room, but is shocked to realize that Anton's friend Vali is in the bed instead. Anton has been kidnapped, and the kidnappers call his father directly, demanding that he pay $3 million for his son's release. They agree to the exchange, and the gangsters gather at the meeting spot with guns ready as a blue van approaches. The men check the back of the van, but it is empty, so they pull the driver, a grown Anna, from the van and search her. The men bring her back to their boss's mansion. They drag her before the boss, Don Prada, who punches her in the stomach, but tells her to take the cash. He threatens that after she takes the cash, he and his men will hunt her and her boss down and kill them. And then Coldy tells him that she didn't come for the money, before revealing a hidden blade, stabbing the Don in the neck and taking out the two guards with him. Anna then calmly walks away, leaving the cash. She exits the building calmly, but as the guards come after her, they are all killed by a sniper. She jumps in the mobster's van, driving away under heavy gunfire. In the woods nearby, Moody has Anton gagged and bound. He leaves Anton there and drives away with Anna. He later discards his rifle in a lake, before reporting to his client that the job has been completed and collecting his payment. The next day, Anna heads over to a bookshop that she operates as a cover for her true nature as an assassin. After a long day, she returns home and prepares cupcakes to celebrate Moody's 70th birthday. She drives to his mansion, where she meets with his caregiver. They go to surprise Moody, but he attacks them with his new drone, shouting that he wants no more birthdays. Anna hands him a cupcake telling him to make a wish, before gifting him a flying V guitar that belonged to Albert King, which he falls in love with. He starts having a coughing fit, as his health is deteriorating, but he refuses any help. Moody leads Anna to his secret hideout hidden beneath the barn floor. He accesses his main computer using a thumb drive disguised as his pendant informing Anna that he bought the building her bookstore is on, and it is now hers. Moody then asks Anna to track down an old associate of his named Lucas Hayes. Anna accepts and heads over to a dry cleaner's store owned by a friend Benny, who uses it as a cover for his hacking business, and asks him to track down Lucas. The next day at the bookstore, a man stops by, seemingly interested in rare books. She shows him a book, but the man changes the subject, interested in Anna herself, and giving her his card with his name, Michael Rembrandt. The next day, Anna meets with Benny, who informs her that Lucas Hayes was last seen as a kid and hands her a drive with detailed info. She then goes by Moody to give the info, but when she enters the home, she is shocked to see the caretaker dead. Anna pulls her gun and goes searching, seeing the guitar she bought for Moody smashed, and begins to envision the struggle that happened. She goes looking and finally stumbles upon Moody's body in the tub dead from a shotgun blast to the face. Anna sits in shock and sees Moody's drone controller. Once she turns it on, the drone flies to her carrying Moody's thumb drive necklace. Anna rushes from the mansion, calling and warning Benny to stay safe until she arrives. She arrives at the dry cleaners, but she is too late as she finds Benny's dead body inside the clothes steamer, burnt to a crisp. Anna returns to her bookstore to grab her stash, but suddenly men pull up and open fire with high-powered rifles ripping the store to shreds. Anna avoids the barrage of bullets and hides behind a table. The men see just her legs and think they have killed her, but one man goes to check and gets a bullet to the head. The other tries to escape in his van, but Anna is already there and kills him. She escapes the scene just before the cops arrive. Anna goes to an internet cafe the next day and goes over the Lucas Hayes info, where she finds that Lucas's father, Edward, who ran a company accused of selling chemical weapons, was assassinated. She then looks over Moody's drive, then realizes that Moody is the assassin who killed Edward in Vietnam. 
Anna travels to Vietnam to find out more about Edward and his connection to Moody's death. In the countryside in Vietnam, a biker gang is speeding down the road, when a biker in black rides right through them, even causing one to crash. The gang eventually tracks down the motorcycle and find the rider who turns out to be Anna, and the leader, Billy Boy, knows her. She gifts him her bike, and mentions the name Josinov Hull, the man now running Edward's company. Billy learns that Moody is dead, and wonders if Vol is involved. Anna insists that she just wants to talk with him, so Billy Boy gets one of his bikers, who works security for Vol's company to get Anna a meeting. She learns that Vol always travels with his security team and has a thing for cigars. Anna then prepares a gift of his favorite cigars and puts them in a box. Later that night, Vol is traveling with his team when Billy Boy's gang pull up alongside them, then hold the entire motorcade at gunpoint. Anna then enters his car, telling him how easy it is to get to him. She demands that he tell her about Edward's life with the company, or she will be the last thing he sees and leaves him her card. Vol calls later, worried that Anna is after him, but Anna tells him she wants to know more about Edward's son Lucas. Hearing this, Vol agrees to a meeting at his office with his lawyer present. Anna then makes it known that she can see them both in his office. Anna heads over to Vol's building, where she passes through security and is escorted to meet with Vol and his lawyer, Duque. Anna gets straight to the point wanting to know about Lucas, as three of her friends are dead because of him. Vol and Duque look worried, but Duque tries to shut down Anna's questioning, when suddenly he shoots Vol in the head. He takes one of the cigars that Anna had sent over earlier, then demands to know everything about Anna. Anna surveys the room, before grabbing a blade hidden as a cigar, slicing Duque across the face and hiding in the vents. More men rush the room and they open fire on the ceiling with Anna barely avoiding the gunfire. She manages to turn on the sprinklers, covering the sound of her movement before jumping from the ceiling and holding Duque at gunpoint, forcing his men to lower their guns. Anna then makes a run for it, using a power cable to electrocute the men chasing after her. More men open fire at her, but Anna skillfully kills two of her attackers, before grabbing a water hose and rappelling down to the ground floor. As she runs outside, she's suddenly hit by a car and falls in pain. Duque and his men capture her and begin to interrogate her, but Anna refuses to answer. Duque resorts to torturing her for hours and keeping her locked up in isolation. Anna refuses to break, so Duque brings in a professional, which turns out to be Rembrandt. He feeds her bone broth, stating that it will help with the inflammation. He tells her that he and Duque works for the same man, but he had nothing to do with Moody's death, which was all Duque. He offers to help her out, but she has to help him also. He goes to speak with Duque, who is reluctant in having Rembrandt involved, but has no choice since he killed Vol without the boss's permission. Rembrandt leaves, but Vol isn't having it, and plans to kill Anna while Rembrandt is here, thinking that the boss would blame him and kick him out. He sends in three of his men, who bound Anna then wrap a sheet around her neck to fake her ending herself, but one of the men gets too close, and Anna jumps into action. She breaks free and uses a food tray to knock the men down before ending the last one brutally. Anna escapes, and after a while Rembrandt comes to check, astonished by her skills. He warns Duque that Anna will be coming after him, but Duque tells him that's what he wants. Anna goes to talk with Billy Boy who warns her to escape and stay alive but Anna is hell-bent on revenge. She recalls how as a child, Moody tried to escort her out of the country, but when the guard refused to let Anna pass, Moody killed all the soldiers just for her. Anna sheds tears recalling all the good that Moody has done for her, and hearing this Billy helps. Anna gets a boat ride deep into the Vietnam jungle, and gets a ride to a Catholic hospital, where Lucas Hayes was last identified many years ago. Anna pretends to be from the Ministry of Health, and gets the nuns to hand over a file on Edward. She then calls Billy Boy to have him look up the file number and learns that records show that Lucas Hayes never left the hospital. Anna goes back to the hospital and learns that Lucas was readmitted to the hospital under the name Christian and is led to a room and shown Lucas, who is both deaf and blind. Anna then gets a call from Rembrandt, who reveals that he knows Anna is at the Catholic school. He wants to meet, and Anna decides to give him a time and place. Anna and Rembrandt meet over dinner, where he urges her to stop her pursuit of his employer. The two pull their guns on each other under the table, but the tension between the two is strong, and they end up flirting with each other. Rembrandt again warns that she will end up dead, but Anna wants to get revenge for Moody. Anna leaves, and while Rembrandt is leaving the restaurant, 
One of Duque's men calls Duque, who authorizes a hit. Duque then calls Rembrandt, telling him that he found Anna's hotel room, when Rembrandt is suddenly attacked. He battles both his attackers before another turns up opening fire on him. Rembrandt runs for cover, but the men keep coming after him, forcing him into combat, but Rembrandt is skilled and kills all the men. The last man on lookout sees Rembrandt walking away unscathed and taking a cab, and pulls his gun to follow the cab. It turns out that Rembrandt has tricked him. At Duque's apartment, one of his men gets shot through the door by Anna, who ambushes Duque and tortures him the same way and brutally kills him. Rembrandt arrives at the apartment soon after, guns drawn, and finds Duque hanging from his roof by his bedsheets. He gets a call from Anna who tells him she knows who his boss is. She tells him, see you soon, then Rembrandt gets shot at and runs off. Anna comes in wielding a shotgun and goes searching for him. Duque attacks her and the two end up in a close combat, but Anna manages to blow him back. She pulls a knife and goes after him, and the two begin to fight, which somehow ends up with Rembrandt tearing the cheeks up. Anna leaves the building when she is suddenly shot in the side, but her attacker is killed by a cloaked man. The man shockingly turns out to be Moody, who helps Anna and helps her with her wound. It turns out that Moody had ambushed the last attacker in his mansion and disguised the man to look like him. The two then learn that Rembrandt's boss is holding a charity banquet at his mansion and learn from Billy Bob that they know she is coming. On the day of the charity banquet, a massive security force is deployed on the mansion grounds, with dogs, drones, and boats patrolling the compound. The ball gets underway, and Rembrandt is on the floor, keeping an eye out for Anna, who has infiltrated the compound disguised as a waitress. Rembrandt's boss then makes his appearance and begins to give a speech. Anna gets her gun ready and sees Rembrandt, trying to avoid his eyes. He, however, spots her and manages to tackle her just before she can make the shot sending the room into chaos. The boss is rushed from the ballroom and to his panic bunker for lockdown. Meanwhile, Anna has opened her wound and Rembrandt is tracking her blood splatter. Anna attacks him but ends up shot in the shoulder as she escapes. Rembrandt goes hunting once more after her. Meanwhile, the boss is in his bunker when Moody ambushes him. The boss is revealed to be Edward Hayes, who hired Moody to kill him, but had faked his death to hide himself, his son, and his criminal empire. Moody tells Edward that he was looking for Lucas, just to make amends for supposedly killing Edward, and Edward brought this down on himself. Moody admits that he is not better than Edward with all the people that he has killed, but he has never pretended to be good. Moody then admits that they both must pay for their sins before revealing a bomb, from his bag, intending to kill them both. Rembrandt is able to track Anna down who is injured and bleeding out. He raises his gun to shoot her, but Moody's bomb explodes, throwing them both back and allowing Anna to escape. Anna is able to escape back to her hometown. She remembers the night of the massacre, when a gang attacked her compound. They had forced Anna to watch them brutally kill her parents on the street. Anna was taken back to the gang's hideout, and had watched a gangster assemble a gun. The man had left her unattended for a minute, and Anna used that time to assemble a gun and kill all the men who killed her family. Anna manages to make it back to her apartment, but Rembrandt turns up. The two hold each other at gunpoint and a gunshot is heard. A few minutes later, Anna exits the building alone. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more movies like this. Thanks for watching.